All right, let's talk some football. Starting off with Aaron Rodgers. Dynasty League Football March startup ADP had him at QB 21. He's expected to be traded to the Jets. We don't have that news yet, but we're waiting on it. All signs point to it. He's going to turn 40 during the season. But last year had a pretty down year, 14.8 points per game in 2022, which was QB 26. He also didn't have the best weapons of his career last year, which I think some of it can be attributed to that. But, you know, the two years prior, QB 7 in points per game, QB 5 in points per game. Pat, what are we thinking with Aaron Rodgers, assuming he is on his way to the Jets? So I am a Green Bay Packers fan, guys. I, I feel like I'm, um, you know, somewhat qualified to answer this, having observed Aaron Rodgers closely for the entirety of his career. Um, like, I don't think he lo- has lost much of anything despite the drop-off we saw last year. I mean, there were... Well, I guess he's lost something in the running game. Like you're not getting much from from him there anymore. And he was never like a Konami code quarterback, but he was an opportunistic and occasionally uh, beneficial runner from a fantasy standpoint. That's pretty much gone. Um, But yeah, like I'm not sure why the points didn't accrue last year. I mean, like I I think there was always this – desire on the part of Matt LaFleur to have a a balanced offense. And um, that was certainly the case last year. So I I think he can still stick all the throws and my goodness, when Rogers is on, I mean, I I still think like he's probably the best pure, he and Dan Marino are probably the best pure passers I've ever seen. Um, I, I don't know who else is with those guys in that class. With the Jets, though, it's interesting because he is going to have Nathaniel Hackett as his offensive coordinator again. And Hackett was the OC for the Packers from 2019 to 2021. In those three years, the Packers ran a glacially paced offense. They were, in terms of seconds per snap, 28th, 32nd, and 32nd in those three years. So they ran at a slow pace. But during those three years, the Packers offense was like average to below average, or I'm sorry, their defense was average to below average. Now he's going to this team that had a terrific defense last year, a defense that should be excellent again under Robert Sala. And it just is not a recipe for shootouts. So I think there's going to be an enhanced interest in Aaron Rodgers because of the move. Yet, I don't think this is setting up all that well for him statistically. He could still have a great season and throw 35, 36 touchdown passes. But I don't see a 5,000-yard season. I don't know if I see a 4,000-yard season for him. Um, So, I don't know. I mean, that ADP sounds pretty right to me. I think I have him quarterback 22, so one off. And, yeah, still a one- or two-year window of, of productivity for him. Um, you know, in super flex, that means a lot just to have him on, on board and have a good second quarterback. But I just think as far as yardage, you're not going to see a banner year from him this year. Yeah, I, I like what you're saying there, because I think it's very true. To keep in mind the type of pace that they could have in the Jets with that kind of offense and the pace that they had when he was with Green Bay. Even though during those big years that he had, you know, it was a slow pace. He was just uber efficient. He doesn't necessarily get me excited for himself, he gets me excited for the people around him more. Um, Skyler, I, I got one Aaron Rodgers this offseason in a startup, and it was a team where I had also drafted Kyler Murray, and the team ended up leaning towards more winning now anyway. So he was a nice way of being able to balance out my QB2 position. Um, what, do, what do you think about that? What do you think about Aaron Rodgers right now? Yeah, so Aaron Rodgers is a player all about cost. I completely agree with Pat where the ceiling might not be that of years past for Rodgers, certainly, especially I love what you said about the rushing. You used to get kind of what we got from like Pat or Joe on that sense where he wasn't necessarily a run first guy, but opportunistic, as you said, he'd pick up a couple yards here, there, a couple first downs, which did add, you know, even a half a point makes a big difference when year end totals come around. Um, so with Aaron, I wouldn't be expecting that huge season, but we're talking high end QB two, I think that's totally fine. And in super flex, that's very valuable. I'm operating under the assumption that Aaron Rodgers with this new challenge is going to give me two seasons. And if I'm getting two seasons of Aaron Rodgers as a high end quarterback too, there's a lot of value still to be had there. Now with dynasty, it all comes down to what is that cost? What is that entry cost coming in for Aaron Rodgers? Most of you guys who have been playing for a long time, or maybe you're new, 
Aaron Rodgers was your quarterback of the last 10 years, right? You've been leaning on this guy for a really long time. And I think similar to like what we did with Tom Brady at the end of his career, you're probably just riding that out into the sunset because I'm not sure at quarterback 21 prices, which is like round 10 to 12 of your super flex startup draft, you're really going to be getting back value that, that Aaron Rodgers gives you while he's in your lineup. He's one of those players who's worth more in your lineup than he is in open market. Um, so he's just, he's a straight up whole player for me. Sure. If there's excitement with the move, this is a player you can consider moving, but in most situations, I'm just content holding on to Aaron Rodgers and riding in. If he's your quarterback three, you've got a, you've got a, a great, a great substitute to throw into your lineup. If he's your quarterback two, as I said, I'm operating on the assumption. I got two years with this guy is a perfect fix for it. Now, with what you said with Kyler Murray, that's a little different because we'll get into team build a little bit. But with Aaron Rodgers, the only time I'm worried is when he is your quarterback one. Because then I think it really comes down to what's our game plan moving forward, right? With Aaron Rodgers, I have a team that went to three championships in a row recently. I had Aaron Rodgers and Matt Ryan as my quarterbacks. The rest of the team's great, young, what built through wide receivers. I was just riding those quarterbacks so the wheels fall off. Obviously, Matt Ryan is basically out of the league. Aaron Rodgers is 40 years young. I got to figure out my next plan. Right. I've got I've got Jordan Love on my bench and I've got the pick 104 coming up where the manager ahead of me who has all three picks said, have fun with Anthony Richardson. Now, what decision do I have to make? Am I taking a player like Anthony Richardson when Aaron Rodgers is my only quarterback on my roster? And that's probably where I'm looking at all my alternatives. Right. So where I'm not planning on moving Aaron Rodgers, per se, I just would caution people with who do you put next to him if he is your quarterback one? I'm not going for a player like Anthony Richardson who carries all of this risk because come 2025, if Anthony Richardson doesn't turn into a quarterback, which I think we'll know by 2025, you could end up with nobody on your team. And it's, and with where you've gone to three state championships and Aaron Rodgers will be good enough where you're not going to be in contention for that 101 or 102 pick in the upcoming classes. What direction do you take with your team? I think that's where it gets a little more nuanced. And if he is your quarterback one, I'd be looking to, okay, how can I at least bring a little bit of security around or take more safe darts to pair with Aaron Rodgers while I ride him out into the sunset? Yeah, I should clarify too. On that the startup I was mentioning, I also drafted Kirk Cousins in that league. So it was like, I'm starting Kirk and Aaron Rodgers while Kyler Murray's going. But anyways, uh, <laughs> Pat, I wanted to ask you real quick this or that for Aaron Rodgers, who you'd rather have currently in Dynasty. Aaron Rodgers or Kirk Cousins? I think I've got Kirk Cousins one spot ahead of Aaron Rodgers. Just okay, a, like a little it. bit more of a window. I mean, I think Aaron Rodgers is 10 times the player Kirk Cousins is. But for fantasy purposes, I think Cousins, uh, you know, just basically because of the longer win, the bigger yep. window, uh, longer longevity. I'm, I'm there with you. I've got a, I've got actually a, a good gap between them personally. Um, Aaron Rodgers or Jared Goff? Hmm. I, I think Goff. Um, Ooh, yeah, okay. but, but they are, that is in the same neighborhood for sure. Yeah. I have them back to back myself. They're, they're real close for me. Skylar, do you have uh, answers on those two? It's really tough. It really, really is tough. <laughs> I, I also have them back to back. I think I have them at 21 and 22 respectfully. Um, with golf higher, just just so leaning because I do think that the next year we're talking two year window for Rogers, right? Let's look at a two year window for Jared Goff. I think the chances that Jared Goff finishes higher in one of those two seasons than Aaron Rodgers is probably a slightly better bet. But historically, with Aaron, you know, it's it's tough to bet against. So it's a really tough decision. Yeah. Um, but neck and neck, ex same same tier. I'm operating with Jared Goff as a two year. Like he's on an offense, yeah. he's going to put up a lot of points, but he could also not be their quarterback in two seasons. So yeah. Just a little, I don't, little I don't think that should surprise anybody. They could be the Anthony Richardson team. Um, that wouldn't surprise anybody. Or the Lamar team. Or the Lamar team. I like that. Let's do that.